The Prince Nymph is a fantastic searching pattern. It works great year round, though I find myself having the best luck with it in the spring, especially when the water is a little murky. The best way to get the beads centered on the hook is to use lead wire. Though you can use as much or as little as you like, I usually fish these in pretty fast water, so I cover about half the shank and then push that up into the bead. Start your thread and create a thread dam just behind the lead wire. I like to wrap through the lead but not up to the bead. It is very easy to crowd the head of this fly, so I like to leave that area alone until the end. When the lead is secure, move your thread back and end at about the barb of the hook. The tail is made of two brown goose biots. Turn one of the biots around so the two biots curve away from each other. Measure the two biots to be about three quarters of the shank in length. Place them on the hook so that one biot is on either side of the hook. Transfer them to your other hand and take a couple of wraps with your thread. While doing this, pinch the biot so they don't roll around the hook. At this point, it is common for the biots to be two different lengths. Check them by pushing them together. If you need to make any adjustments, you can gently pull the biots back and forth till they are the correct length. Once you are satisfied with the tail, cut the biots so the ends will butt up against the lead wire. Pinch the biots again to prevent them from spinning and take several tight wraps to secure them in place. Place your gold wire alongside the hook, again butting it up to the lead, and secure it with your thread. Cut the tips on two or three pieces of peacock curl so that they are aligned, and tie them in again with the butts up against the lead wire. Once secure, begin wrapping the hurl up the shank. We tied in all the materials, butted up against the lead wire to create a more even underbody and also to help create a more gradual taper. This will help the peacock curl to form a better looking body. Tie off the peacock curl, leaving a small gap between the hurl and the bead. Cut the hurl off fairly close to the fly. Create segmentation by counter wrapping the wire. If you are using a rotary vise like I am, put a half hitch on the fly first. You can use other material for the rib, like mylar or oval tinsel, but I prefer wire for the durability. Tie off the wire at the same place as the hurl by placing wraps on either side of the wire, then cut or helicopter off your wire. For the hackle, I like to use brown hen neck. Prep the feather by clearing the stem near the base, and cut the stem so you have a little bit of bare stem remaining. Tie in the stem at that gap we left behind the bead. Nearly all feathers have a shiny side and a dull side. To help the fibers lay back, make sure the shiny side is facing forward. Then make two wraps with the hackle around the fly. Tie off the feather by placing wraps on either side of it, locking it into place, then cut it. Pull the hackle fibers back and take several wraps to help lay the fibers down. If needed, you can use your fingers to coerce the fibers. Once the hackle is leaning backwards, cut the fibers directly on top of the fly. The wing is made of two white goose biots. Pinch them between your fingers at an angle. They should resemble an open pair of scissors. Lay the biots on top of the fly, making sure they both curve down. I like the wing to be about as long as the body, though it is commonly tied a little bit longer. Grab the biots with your other hand and press them to the fly so they don't move, then lay down a few thread wraps. Sometimes the biots will move, so if they need to be realigned, do so at this point. After any necessary adjustments are made, cut the biots with little tags remaining. 
Use your thread to pull the ends up, then fold them back with your finger. Once folded back, take a few thread wraps to secure them in place. This step can be a little tricky, but pays off with a much more durable fly. The biots are slick and can be pulled out easily by toothy trout, so folding the ends back helps lock them into place. We are going to use the wraps from the whip finish to clean up the fly. Unspin your thread so that it lays flat, then use the turns of your whip finish to cover the white from the biots and to create a smooth looking head. When you are finished, you should get something that resembles this. Though it can be a little tricky to tie, the Prince Nymph is a fantastic fly that deserves a place in everyone's fly box. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and tight lines.